how do you go about potting up field-grown junipers? And a well-planted tree can just be picked up by the trunk. I bought 20 field-grown junipers. And that's half of them. And this is the other half. Look at them. They're massive. They're not potted up. They all need to go into a pot. 20 junipers, you say. Where did you get them? I got them from Belgium. A grower there was clearing out a field and somebody from my club took a truck, went down there, picked them up, and now the whole club has masses of juniper. My initial interest was triggered by trees like these. These are Itoigawas and they are probably about 15 years old. Ground grown, quite long trunks, quite fat trunks. Lots of options here. I've got pots, I've got substrate. I need to get some more substrate and I'll be potting these up and I'll show you how I treat the root ball and how I plant them up. Pine bark. Artificial lava. Clay particles. Pumice. And some shredded wood, because I don't have a lot of pine bark. And today it's actually a holiday. And in Germany I can't get anything. And my normal pine bark, I can't get in the Netherlands. So let's see whether this also works. Now, when you buy something like this in bulk, um, you might end up getting really, really nice trunks, but with roots very high up, which might not be needed. And very little in the terms of roots and substrate later on, lower down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just trim off these lower roots here. Because I don't want to have them here and for the final design of the tree they're not needed. And there are enough roots here at the base for the roots, uh, for the plant to sustain itself. This way now you get the movement much more clearly in the trunk line itself. And I can pot it up a lot shallower, saving on substrate, saving on pot size. And just be careful that you don't remove too many of the roots. You still want these big roots to remain. Now a big root like this that has been cut by a shovel, cut it clean. All the other roots I just leave in place. Here's another one that has been damaged by a shovel and I reduce it in length. I reduce it in length. This is pretty much all the root work that I want to do on these right now. There is still quite a bit of soil and I'm taking the field soil out. But I'm not cleaning it completely, I just remove the loose particles. Right? Now these were dug up two days ago. They have been laying in my shed since then. Sheltered, wet, but it really is time to get these potted up. I'm going to leave everything on. All this foliage will aid in developing a new root mass. Now for this tree, I'm using a very, very small pot. If you look at the size of the tree compared to the pot, this pot is really small, but it is just big enough for the roots to fit in, which is quite useful in getting it settled up. And as said before, I probably will remove a large part of this tree eventually. So for now, I'm just going to plant it in this pot. Then I need to, of course, have wire. I'm going to wire the plant in the pot. And you can basically just decide the side of the wire by just wrapping it around the pot, clipping it off so that the ends just barely meet. Then you just take the wire, move it in through the pot on the one hand, and you take a second hole and you loop it, loop it through the pot again. And you do the same thing at a 90 degree angle, right? Just like that. Another piece of wire. Here I'm going to take a little bit more distance from the center of the pot. So I have now a wire here in the middle. I'm going to do a wire here as well. So that I can have one side of the pot more root ball than on the other. Now I can of course make a mesh to put over these holes, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to use the shredded wood for that. So just the shredded wood on the bottom of the pot, just a little bit to stop the rest of the substrate from falling through. Then a bit of normal substrate on top. Take my plant, I'm moving the roots down instead of up so that the roots go into the pot at the bottom, mostly, just like that. 
and now I can just wire it into place using the wires that I just created. At this point I am not worried about where it connects to the trunk. Full styling will be done later on. So I'm just going to put it in place here. You just have one wire you go around, you try to push it underneath the main service route where possible. And then on the other end you connect and you do this for both ends. Pull the wire, then tighten until there's no more pull and then it's good to go. The other side the same thing. So the wire has been tightened and now I can literally just lift the pot by the roots or by the plant. Time to just take some substrate, fill it up, make sure that the roots all go in the substrate in the pot. And once again, no need to be very subtle about it, I use a chopstick to then wiggle side to side, moving substrate between the roots as much as possible and work the roots down back into the pot if they come up. Go around the roots, do this everywhere. This may take a few minutes per pot to really get the substrate as much between the roots as possible. This is an important step. This will allow the roots to start rooting into your substrate rather than sticking to the substrate that they were in. After this, of course, it is important to water the whole pot thoroughly. And then I'll put these in semi-shade, avoiding wind. Fortunately, summer here is pretty much over and slowly we see rain picking up. And I'll just let it recover for the rest of winter. But by the end of winter, it should have rooted well into this pot. So that's the first Chinese juniper done. Only 19 more to go. And there we go, middle of April. Doing well, fertilized, growing. There's no need to completely clean these root balls out. Um, the roots have had a big hit. So just remove some of the old soil, that new substrate can get in between, and then plant them up. This is the perfect time to do this sort of work, um, because in fall a lot of trees will create new roots. They are investing for winter, so rerooting should occur very, very quickly. Now if you look at this, this has been damaged by the spade, but here you see young fresh roots in the root ball. This is a really good sign for rerooting. This wonderful Itergawa has side roots here on this side branch of the main trunk. So that's going to be a massive cutting. Let's see whether that will stay alive as well. That's another plant. It was strangled in. Look at that. That's just a side branch that had hit the ground and then also rooted. Now I have an extra plant. No need to do anything to this cutting right now, it's just planting it up, getting it to root. And in case you're wondering, here it is, middle of April, tips have started to grow. All set for this year. Light is fading fast, so I doubt I'm going to show many trees that I'm putting up. Um, this is the rest of the, of the big Itogawa that I just got the cutting off. Very nice, thick trunk, loose soil, can just wiggle off some of the soil, comb out a little bit, so that here and there I get all the way to the inner core, but I'm not going to completely clean it out. I want to leave some of the soil in the core, because that way the roots will more easily survive and will less be less hard on the tree roots to adjust to the new environment. Um, but keep in mind that this field soil needs to come out in the next year or two. So let it grow for a year, let the roots recover, then re repot it again, then do the final root work. That way you have a good chance of root survival rates with all your trees. Just this loose beard here.
It is the first week of October. Temperatures are dropping, but it is still fairly warm. It's in the 20s during the day. So there is still a lot of root growth to be expected. This is now really ready to be potted up. I shouldn't do anything else. Um, the foliage will push the new roots. And if I keep the foliage moist over the next couple of weeks, it should reroot before spring starts. And in early spring, it should get a flying start. Now, if I look at this tree, the root base is slanted like this then it is unlikely that I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this as a trunk or one of the back branches here. So I can now at this stage also decide I'm not going to plant it in a big pot. Instead, I'm going to reduce this considerably, giving this more power and making it much more stable to plant up. So this is the plant that I'm now planting up, keeping this not completely, just like that. And I'm going to plant it up just like this in this pot. So it is planted at a slant. It's stable enough in the pot. And this will then create my new tree. At this point in time, it really is the wires that holds the tree in the pot. So the pot half filled with substrate is just kept in place by two pieces of wire. And the tree trimmed back at these points. Let's see. All of this came off from this side, is now a lot more stable in the pot, can get established, these can start growing, and with one of these side branches here, I later on will make a tree, and probably it will start sprouting here on the trunk again. I managed to do the first seven last night, and then it got dark, and now again it is already evening before I finally get down to it. Now I have a whole bunch of cutoffs, because for our stability, I did decide in the end to prune a couple of these branches. Let's continue. Pot up the other 13. What a big mess I've made here. I realize it's not always very clear what I'm doing. I don't have a nice background, but look at this plant. Look at these nice roots. This actually looks very much like it has been in a pot before. Look, these roots, they are going around and they are quite clumped together. So I could open up this further, but it has dried out a little bit. They're out of the ground already for the third day. So I think I'm not going to do all this much. I'm just going to pack it into a small pot. And then, yeah, I think semi cascadish. Nice plant. Horrible foliage though. These are going to be very top heavy. So it's important to really tie down these roots into the pot. Um, because the chances of these trees blowing over in winter is actually quite real. We're going to get a lot of fall storms and these are not going to be fully rooted before then. I think they'll root in a little bit, but not completely. So what I'm doing is I'm putting more wires on one side of the pot than the other, so that once I plant it up in a sort of a cascading style, it can really hang into these wires. That should be good enough for now. As this pot is actually quite large, I am not going to put a lot of substrate below the root ball. I actually will have the pot as shallowly filled as possible so that I don't overwater this tree as it is settling in. Um, we're going into winter, it's going to be wet. And as always, right, you just have one wire, you go around, you try to push it underneath the main surface root where possible. And then on the other end, you connect and you do this for both ends. Pull the wire, then tighten until there's no more pull. And then it's good to go. The other side, the same thing. And then of course, just backfill with substrate, chopstick, wiggle side to side and let it slowly get in the root ball, making sure the roots are really into this substrate because roots don't like to cross borders between substrate. Somehow it is difficult for them. And a well-planted tree can just be picked up by the trunk and the pot just comes up with it without any wiggle or any movement. Water this well and then it's all set to go. This is a very big Chinese juniper, some high roots and a big side branch here at the base. Now, as it has been out of the ground for a bit, but it has been kept wet, the roots are still nice and fresh. 
scratching the edge of the brood ball. You can see this has been already planted in some sort of a substrate and I don't know why these plants need to recover from being dug up. Look at how dry that is on the inside. Another good reason for using open substrate. This dries out way too easily and it's hard to re-wet on the core. Interesting development. There is a big root here on the side of this trunk and there are some smaller roots. So sometimes in a root ball I find these roots that are a little bit longer or broken and I just take them out. This is a very big, heavy root in the root ball coming from the other side. I'm just going to shorten it, if I can get to it. Where are you? Here. So this doesn't add a lot to the root ball, but it does clean it up a little bit. And basically if you then hold up the root ball and you say, just remove a few of these older roots that are a little bit long or a little bit fat. That helps a lot in later on putting it up here. There's a lot of old organics. Shake it out a little bit. Then you have a root ball. The main root starts here. So it's going to be planted up to at least here into a new pot. Just like before, right? You just take the plant, you plant it on top of substrate, wiggle it down a little bit to push the substrate in from the bottom. Take your wire underneath the surface roots. Here, of course, this is the lump of where I cut back a branch. This is ideal to put your wire over because it really is a strong connection point. You take your wire from the other side, you twist them together. And once they're twisted together, the plant is basically stable in the pot. You take the other end, you do the same thing here. You go over uh, underneath the roots bit of a tricky thing, comes out through the substrate, pull tight, bring the other end in, move roots aside where possible, so that it really comes between the roots rather than pushing the roots in. And that was only half of them. I still have all of these to pot up, but I'm not going to show you how I plant these up. It will be very clear from the first couple of trees that I filmed how I go about doing this. So for now, that's it, I'm just going to go through all of these now. Once I'm done, hopefully today, but maybe it will be tomorrow because it is already getting dark. I'll have these all potted up and I'll show you every single tree if I actually feel like filming all. All done potting up. This is one of them. I'm not going to bore you with all trees that I potted up, but this one I wanted to show you. Quite a slender trunk. Look at this lower trunk movement. And then it goes into a fairly straight trunk. And what I'm thinking eventually is that it might come a little bit up like this. I can still wire this out and make it a very tall, slender, gentle moving tree. Another small one with a very slender trunk. And here the interesting part is good bend in the lower trunk, then a very long straight piece and another straight piece. But if I remove everything here at this junction, then I have a very small compact tree here. One of the biggest of the batch. Very nice fat trunk, very long. Eventually this I'm going to bend back up and then I'm going to do what I think Dan Robinson did. I'm going to make a spiral trunk carving on the trunk to really show off the bark in a spiral going down, having branches at every step of the way. I really like this tree. It has a very informal floppy nature to it, which I can really, really enjoy. In fact, I think this tree might just become reduced a little bit in the branches, but be left really, really rugged like this. Because a tree like this with a funky trunk like that, who wouldn't want it? Of course, this one I pruned back considerably. There was a long branch here, but you know, I don't want only big trees. This one is going to be developed much shorter. Yeah, what can I say? Um, you buy a field, um, you buy random plants from a field. This is what you also get, right? Trees with hardly any lower branching, there is some interesting movement, but the foliage is very far away. Um, as this had not, has not settled in into the pot yet, I haven't decided. I might actually compress these curves a lot so that this foliage moves into this domain and then build my tree with branches like this and this. My initial interest was triggered by trees like these. These are Itoigawas and they are probably about 15 years old, ground grown. 
quite long trunks, quite fat trunks. Lots of options here to either bend the main trunk back up or go with the lower branches. And then a trunk like this, of course, I would air layer off and then make a separate tree out of this. Now I've made a conscious effort to plant these up in pots as small as possible. Um, that reduces the risk of overly wet roots. And for roots, it is therefore easier to colonize the pot. It's a little bit counterproductive. It will not grow as quickly next year, but it will help enormously in resettling them. So all the junipers are just standing here. It's the middle of winter. Um, it's cold. Minus six last night, snow, ice, and they'll just shelter here. Um, they are actually in the sun. If it gets permanently minus 10, I will move these out of this spot into a more sun protected spot. But for now, I'll just let them enjoy the sun and hope that this aids in rerouting them. And in springtime, I'll look at them again. Isn't spring glorious? Look at these. I have given away sold already five or six of these so the collection is thinning i'm not going to keep all of them but the tips are grow are green there is new growth occurring i have no doubt all of these are now going to push roots and basically with that i think i'm going to sign off i wish you a very good growing season see you later this was the other growing bonsai with way too many junipers